the unmet need in the field is huge. You know, um, I think the rare disease space is gaining traction just because of the fact that patients have no approved therapies or very few approved therapies. The standard of care is still very low. And it's upon us, it behooves us to actually elevate that standard of care, bring forward advances that are really bridging the unmet medical needs. You know, the therapies that are used sometimes today, even for cold agglutinin disease, are being used off-label because physicians have no other choice and they have to give some improvement for patients. So I think this is where the regulators are coming from, is they're actually working with the companies, you know, trying to help advance the cost of advancing science. And if, for example, even our program in cold gluten disease, which we call as BIV-009, has received breakthrough therapy designation from the FDA, you know, which will hopefully help us expedite the program along pretty quickly, working with the regulators. So, you know, um, I, when we talk about the cold gluten and disease phase, I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the, just the sheer burden of the unmet medical needs for patients. There are really no approved therapies today. You know, these patients go through a pretty significant burden in terms of what they need to endure. They have chronic anemia, which obviously is fatigue, shortness of breath, going through significant phases of hemolytic crisis. So hemolysis is something that's underlying the pathology. In addition, there's also a huge burden of thromboembolic events in these patients. You know, the study we presented yesterday on the natural history of this disease by Dr. Catherine Broom talks about it in terms of... Uh, how high the burden is in terms of 55% increased chance of getting thromboembolic events. Physicians nowadays are using therapies like rituximab to give some a benefit, but these are not approved. You know, they look at other approaches of transfusions, which again has its own side effects of iron overload and frequent need for transfusions. So we are really looking to bridge this gap by bringing forward a therapy, which is our program, which is a humanized monoclonal antibody, looking to target the C1S in the complement system of the serine protease, which hopefully will help inhibit the antibodies that develop in the body that destruct the red blood cells. So hopefully, you know, we are hoping to tackle the anemia, hoping to tackle the hemolysis, hoping to reduce the burden of thromboembolic side effects and give patients back their meaningful quality of life.